Howdy there, Silver Mongoose here. Back again with another off-the-cuff video for you. I don't have any notes for this. I just thought uh, I had some thoughts going through my head that I wanted to share with you. If you've been paying attention to retro game prices, which I assume you have been if you're watching this video, you may have noticed that in 2020 to 2021, because of the pandemic, video game prices have really skyrocketed in the retro world. Some games are, you know, worth several times, you know, sometimes double, triple, quadruple what they were in 2019. So like you, or, you know, like you may have been doing, I have been kind of looking at some games and thinking, oh, shouldn't I sell these? Shouldn't I, you know, put this towards games that I like more or something? So I just grabbed some games off my shelves that kind of represent different um, thought processes that have been going through my head for reasons why to keep a game or not to keep a game. So this video is just kind of me thinking out loud at you and seeing what you think uh, and seeing if you have any thoughts about this. So Splatoon is a bit of an oddity, so I'll take that one off right now. But all of these games, I try to pick a variety, so some older disc games, a mobile uh, a DS game, Game Boy game, uh, a GameCube game, and then a Wii U game. All of these games, I think the most expensive one was uh, Clock Tower, which I bought in uh, 2009 for $20, which at the time was a lot for a retro game for me. But I really wanted to play this one. So all of these, I think I paid uh, between 0 and $20 for. Splatoon, I bought at, at launch, so that is a full price, but it's, it's, it is an oddity in this discussion. So all of these are worth significantly more than what I paid. You know, I think Clock Tower might have uh, might be 50 or 60 right now. Um, you know, so all of these uh, are worth more than what I paid for them. And so I'll just start with the first reason, just get into it here. Splatoon is here to represent games that may not really function in the future. So Splatoon 1 on Wii U, I believe you can still play online. But I wouldn't be surprised if in 2021 or 2022... Nintendo cuts online support for the Wii U, especially because they have Splatoon 3 coming out at some point. And if you haven't played Splatoon, it is largely based around 4v4 uh, online multiplayer. There is a single-player story mode here. It's pretty basic. Uh, I haven't even gone through it all, even when I love Splatoon and play it like every week. So when this game gets online cut off, Am I ever going to play Splatoon 1 again? Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe not. I don't think I will. So wouldn't it be better to sell this game before it completely dies? I don't think it's worth too much, and I don't know. At this point, I'm just keeping it because it's, it's a brand new IP from Nintendo, and I think maybe in the future I might want to go back and uh, play it. But for me, playing games online that are really built around online is new for me. So this is probably something that you've been thinking about for like a decade or so. You know, maybe you've been playing games online on, um, you know, the PS2 or something. Or I guess another example would be Monster Hunter Try on the Wii. It's largely based around online, but there is a pretty good single player. So that's one that I am going to be going back to. Splatoon, I might not. Um, but speaking of games not really working anymore, so here I have uh, Pokemon Crystal. Pokemon games sell for a lot more than what they used to go for. You know, even a loose cart of uh, some of the early Pokemon games are, you know, 50, 60. Some of them are over 100. Um, this Pokemon Crystal, like a lot of old games, has a battery. The battery no longer works. So I can't actually play this. I can turn it on and start a file, but I can't actually play through it. So what's the point of keeping this? You know, if I could get, I don't actually know the prices, but let's say if I could get $80 for this. Like, shouldn't I do that? This is just like a little piece of plastic that I'm never going to play. I can take out the battery and replace it. I've never done that. But there are a lot of games I have, you know, Nintendo games, Super Nintendo games, Game Boy games that no longer save. You know, my Zelda 2, when I got it back in the early 90s on the NES, it never even saved then. So it's, n it's never saved uh, ever before. So, am I ever going to actually take the battery and replace it? Mm, probably not. I mean, it's easier for me to just play an emulator on my on my DS. So, why am I keeping this? I actually don't know why I'm keeping this. I guess 
like it's almost easier to just just keep and like and also like it's one of my favorite games of all time i love the case i love that it's see-through i miss see-through stuff so you you see that i don't actually have good answers for you i'm just kind of thinking out loud here so should, should i bother keeping games that will no longer function in some capacity in the future or already don't function i don't know a really easy one here is Clock Tower. So like I said, I paid, you know, um, $20 for this back in the day. I really like this game. I've been it many times. It's pretty short. Uh, a lot of people say it's terrible. I like it. And I think I'm going to still play this. Like every maybe three or four years, I'll play through it. So even though this one is worth much more than $20 now, I have a reason to keep this. This is like, this was an easy <laughs> example here um, that I that I had. There are some that are less easy. So this one, um, Evolution on the Dreamcast, is, uh, I guess, like a dungeon crawler game. Um, it has randomized dungeons, one really basic town that you go to. It's really, really bare bones. Sometimes it was a lot of fun. Other times, not so much. But I remember when I was getting near the end of this, and I knew I was like halfway through the last dungeon or something, I told myself, okay, well, when I'm done this, I'm, you know, I'm not really enjoying this last part. I should just get rid of it. And then the pandemic happened and, you know, I, I was had way more important things on my mind than uh, an old Dreamcast game. So I put it on the shelf and now I'm looking at it. And I'm like, mm, I, I, this one's weird because I think I'm keeping this right now anyways for the potential for future nostalgia. <laughs> like, does that make sense? That sounds crazy, but... When I was playing this, it was an extremely difficult part of my life. Like, really difficult. Um, and it was nice to just have something that was kind of mindless and basic that I can just go through and just kind of relax, at, like, at the end of the day. Um, or even I would sometimes, like, watch a TV show while playing this. Um, and that kind of moment, that transition in my life that was really difficult, isn't that the kind of thing that I'm going to feel nostalgic for in the future? I don't know. So this kind of represents uh, games that I'm kind of banking on future nostalgia, which is not a thing that I've done before this game. And is, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of silly. Um, but that's kind of, like I said, I'm just thinking out loud at you. There's no script here. I'm already <laughs> regretting some of the things I said, but whatever. It's all in good fun. And this is the the last, I guess, like, standard, uh, you know, CD game here. Um, and before I forget it, a thing that is to keep in mind as well, in terms of games that are no longer going to work in the future, is a lot of these disc games aren't going to work. You know, disc rot is a thing that happens, and, you know, old CDs will eventually just, just stop functioning. Um, the reason I have Skies of Arcadia here, uh, which is kind of a, it's a staple of any Dreamcast collection, I suppose. Um, I have not played this version before. I have played the GameCube version, which is largely looked at as the better version. Because the GameCube version, like, ups the XP that you get, I think, and has, like, fewer battles. Like, on the back, it says, like, more wanted battles, which is the way to say Skies of Arcadia had too many random battles. Um, and I've played that one. I'm ever going to play this version, which is harder <laughs> than the other one. Maybe I'd, I'd like to someday, but I've had this for, you know, 15 years. I, I, you know, I think I tested it when I got it, and that's about it. And there might be somebody out there who really wants to play this game. So shouldn't I get rid of it? Part of it, part of it for this one is I do still have hope that I'm going to play it someday. And the other part of it is there is kind of like that... Um, that feeling that, like, this is an essential game. This is an important game for the Dreamcast. And I would just like to have it in my library, which is pretty, you know, selfish of me um, in one way. But I mean, it does make me happy to like look at my Dreamcast games and see that I have, you know, Jet Grind Radio and Skies of Arcadia and Sonic Adventure, which is another game that I have multiple versions of. I first played through all the adventure games on the GameCube, and then I went back to the Dreamcast and played them. So, yeah, this and also Chrono Trigger also kind of fits in multiple categories. So I have Chrono Trigger on the Super Nintendo. But the Super Nintendo battery doesn't work, um, so it doesn't work. And also I have another version. I know this version isn't identical, but the old version doesn't work. It's worth quite a bit of money, even loose. 
and I have a, another version that does work and will continue working. So why am I keeping the Super Nintendo one when I have the DS one? I mean, I, I suppose there is a chance, again, I might replace the battery, but I might not. And I just want to say, this is a complete side note, but this is like probably one of my favorite game covers of all time. It's just... Oh man, it's good. Uh, that's what happens when I don't have a script. So, yeah, Chrono Trigger um, kind of falls into the other category of multiple games and games that no longer work that I have multiple versions of. And Fire Emblem is here to represent a games that are just worth a lot of money now. I think within the past year, this has gone for upwards of $500, sometimes as low as you know, $250 or $300. I have never played this game. The only game I've played in the Fire Emblem series is I played the one on Game Boy Advance, I believe, a little bit, and then I played the mobile one, which I know is not like a good representation of what Fire Emblem is. But this GameCube game, um, like this came out kind of when nobody knew what Fire Emblem was yet, because I think Fire Emblem became more popular with every Smash Brothers games as they kept adding more and more Fire Emblem characters. Um, and in, I think, Brawl, they added they added Ike here. So this game is worth a lot of money. I haven't played it. I want to. I actually genuinely do really want to play this game. I just haven't gotten around to it. But would I pay, let's say it goes for $400 now for the sake of argument. Would I pay $400 to play this game? No. At most, maybe 40 So like 10 times less than that. Um, that's kind of like my limit for retro games is about like 30 to $40 is like pushing it for me. So would I pay that much? Yes, I'd pay like 30 or 40 bucks to play this, but I wouldn't pay 400. So kind of like, it kind of starts this thing in my mind of like, well, if you wouldn't pay 400 to play it, shouldn't you sell it for 400 and then buy like 10 more games that you would play for $40? Like, I don't know if that, that reasoning makes sense. Um, but on the one hand, I'm like, yeah, just sell it. You wouldn't pay that much for it. But on the other hand, I do really want to play it. Um, I did watch one of my siblings play quite a bit of this when I was younger, so I have a little bit of nostalgia for it. But, oh man, $400, like, that would that'd be pretty nice, right? And again, similar to the uh, Skies of Arcadia, when I look at this, I kind of feel like, hmm, I know this is valuable. I know this is valuable, and there is like, uh, I don't know if it's like a, a capitalist society upbringing, or if it's like, you know, uh, uh, part of our, our DNA, but like when you have something valuable, you want to hang on to it, right? Even though I would never buy this for that much money, the fact that I have it makes me, <laughs> kind of makes me, kind of makes me happy. So these are just a few games that uh, kind of represent different aspects of, I guess, the buying and selling of, of retro gaming and the, I guess, the practice of accumulating a nice library. Yeah, and I was just wondering if you had similar thoughts, if you had similar experiences with, like, an online game or uh, doubles or newer versions or games that no longer function anymore, games that are worth quite a bit more than what you paid. So I just thought it'd be nice to, to share these thoughts and see if you have uh, similar ones. This has been Silver Mongoose Videos and remember Classic Gaming. Never gets old. But boy, is it getting expensive.